Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of the Banner Saga. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today as we, well, we were trying to save some people in this village and uh, we did, nobody, none of us died. And I'm not really sure if we're gonna have to fight again. I don't think so, so that was perfect. That was perfect. This town is nothing but ghosts and now covered in more dredge bodies too. Remarkably, as you're about to leave, you find an old man sitting quietly in a tattered market stall with a couple items in front of him. He hums to himself, uh, to himself as if nothing were wrong and seems to be in shock. Your clansmen gather him into the caravan before you leave. Did we gain supplies? We did not. Do we have a market? We do. Awesome. So now we are going to look at the map and uh, see where exactly we're going. <laughs> so we are over here at Hawkstorp Ludan, L Lunadim Wood. An unassuming patch of woods surrounded by... Oh, it's the... Um, no, we didn't read this. You guys go ahead and read that. Uh, so we're going... Oh, Langloom Forest. The most sprawling forest known to man or varl. The Langloom is often remembered for having occasional rows of uh, perfectly lined trees that look out of place in the middle of the wilderness as if they had been carefully planted or even placed. Many suppose the Loom Mother planted the trees herself and the rest instantly sprang up around them. But the Langloom is, dangerous, is a dangerous place that readily harkens back to the image of the Loom Mother. Yeah, we're going down the Stange March. Not content to stop in Stromland, a man named Stand hoped to find land as rich as Aberrand along the new coast. Instead, he found bog. All the way up the coast he went until ice covered the trees. This is far enough, says Stan, and he hoped, and he stopped in Skoger. So we started here, and we went there for some reason, because we wanted to go to Grofheim, the capital, if I remember correctly, the capital of uh, the Varl, I think it is? We never got there, though. And now we're going away, basically. Not really sure where this trip is going to end, but... Dalalond. A land of valleys where the horse born with withdrew during the Great Wars and now roam in nomadic packs. The warmer lands to the south are as, as sprawling and empty as they are unexplored. Long ships have sailed along its coasts... Have, uh, long, long ships that have sailed along its coasts have found little reason to return. Okay, so but maybe since there's no dredge there, that'll be a good thing. Who knows? Maybe that's where we're going. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, what I do know is that we're going to try and buy as many supplies as we can. And there are no supplies! Terrible. Terrible. That is terrible. Mm-hmm. That is not good. That is not good. Mm-hmm. This is good. No, I, I'm not. I'm, what's not good is not having supplies. I'm not really concerned about the items right now because I don't want to spend them. Uh, well, we need to level up Ivor, but apart from him, nothing real, nobody else needs that, so we're just gonna not level him up right now, we're gonna leave, our morale be damned, I wanna save as many people as possible, and we, no, wait a minute, this is Hawkstorp, we are in Hawkstorp, okay, three days of supplies left, and we're not gonna be able to hunt, because apparently that's not a thing, we're not gonna be able to scavenge, oh, more supplies missing, the woman by a wagon says, to you and look tracks right here they look like children's footprints but my husband and I followed them into the wilderness uh, a ways they meet up with some adult tracks no no telling how many let's see so let's question parents about their children let's go with that ow now they're gonna starve Oh, that's, that's what they get. That's what they get. You quietly make your rounds asking parents about their children's whereabouts. Some give exact details, others are aloof, but don't, no one knows anything about missing supplies. All promise to keep closer tabs on their own. Yeah, you're gonna die now. You're gonna start death, and I'm gonna laugh at you as you die. Every single day I'm gonna laugh at them because they are idiots. Well, except for the guys that stole the supplies. That's not... They're not gonna starve to death. We'll see, though. We'll see. I'm gonna spend my hard-known... Hard-earned renown... Uh, to buy them supplies, but we are looking at a... Uh, is this Loom Mother? Because those seem like breasts, so... No, she's... I don't know. She's got, she got a spear. I don't know. Could be like a sign of ferti fertility or something. Hmm. The Godstone for Ingrid, Goddess of Knowledge, looks on as the caravan takes a much-needed rest. Ivor shoes some children away from a solitary dredge slinger lying dead beneath the stone. Should we be worried about that? You ask Ivor, pointing to the to the dredge body. I don't think so, he replies. Still, couldn't hurt to have a few guards look around. Hours pass without warning. Let's inspect the godstone. 
Ingrid's godstone is carved with ancient runes which don't make much sense to you, though Ivan tells you some of the Menders have deciphered them. It's how the Menders learn the language of the gods. Past the largest stone, a long series of slabs contain more writing all the way down the hill. The odd thing, he tells you, is that the writing, you, you, the writing occasionally changes depending on who is reading it. Usually it describes the history of the gods, but it can be about nearly any topic. Sadly, Ivan doesn't know how to read it himself. Juno could, he says. Well, we need to find her. As you're ready to depart, you hear screams from the near from uh, near the main godstone. The same boy so curious about the dead Reg, dredge before are shrieking and pointing. For a moment, you think it must not have been dead, but then you see that they have opened a wrapping that was in, dre in the dredge's hands. Wait, says Ivor, his arms across his chest. This shouldn't be seen. Get everyone away. A shield sweeps over you. A lad pushes past and gasps. Stop! Shouts Ivor, but the curious onlookers have already seen it. What have we seen? A dead children? Dead child? Maybe. Live it, says Ivor. On the ground before the dead slinger is a small stony figure, its hands searching for something it, it, it can't find. That's... a baby. That dredge is a woman? We've been killing women. We've been slaughtering women and children this whole time. Leaving them to die? In a war, it's only the males who fight. We've been fighting these dredge the whole way. Why are women with children on their backs attacking us? They're not invading. They're running. Everyone stops dead in their tracks. The entire caravan is gathered around aghast. When I spoke to Juno, says Ivind, she told me something was coming. She didn't know what. A darkness. Something black is covering the world. And the dredge are running from it, just as we're running from them. The serpent, the quake, it's all the beginning of the end. Ivor, I, I knew it. I knew. Why? Why didn't you say something? You knew, wait. Ivor knew? When I was young, I killed one of the Sunder during the Second Great War. We called it Raze. Every time we would build our defenses, it would flatten them and push us back again. I became separated from the rest of the Varl and stumbled upon Ray's Deep in a snowstorm, alone. She was nursing. I threw my axe. It twisted in the wind. Her son died in her arms. She was so pathetic, kneeling in the snow. She didn't even try to stop me when I took her head. That's how I killed the Sunder. When I found my way to Grafheim, the Varl wanted to make me Kunder, next to be king. I left, walked until I ended up in Skoger, where no one knew what I had done. The only sound is the wind blowing through the trees. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of figured that the, the dredge were not really mindless beasts. I mean, I don't know. The first... That first moment when we saw a lat and her dad. And I never remember his name. Is like Rook or Groon or Kur? I don't know. I think it's Rook. Um, but that first moment, there's a dredge on the background just carrying a, a deer. Man. For a long time, nobody says a thing until a child breaks the silence. What do we do with a baby? She asks. A lump forms in your throat, looking at the small obsidian st creature squirming before you. Oh, wait a minute. It's alive? I thought it was dead. I'm not gonna put it up to a vote. No way. I'm I'm gonna insist on taking it with the caravan. Let's go, let's do that. You argue strongly for showing mercy and humanity. Some of the women in the caravan hesitantly agree to take in the dredge infant, while others are furious about bringing it along. Not long afterwards, one of the women comes to you. It's swaddling. It's swaddling was being held by this. Yeah, it's not. It's that apostrophe shouldn't be there. She says, giving you a hairpin that looks distinctly undredge-like. An inscription on the silver almost slips your notice. Persevere. From the goddess herself, if you ask me, the woman tells you. Oh, whoa, 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 wait, we get an item? Awesome. Can we camp? No, we can't. Not when we are in this location. We're... <sighs> we're taking in people, but we're so far away from anywhere. Where are we going? Are we going to there? Borgskard. I think we are. An aging and senile mess of a city that I can't remember whether whether it wants to sell you something or steal everything you've got. While Orm... What? Orm. While Orm grew early into an important hub of trade, its twin sister, Boar, 
became the place to buy things nobody else was willing to hawk. It's greatly supported by the potent the potent items harvested in Ray and Tistel, and yeah, I can't say the names. Sorry, guys. And plagued by huge disparities between the extremely rich and the suffering poor. Well, sounds like a place where you can buy supplies, because the rich were well, certainly not going to give them away to the poor, and we need them. And the poor can, I don't know, die? Because we are going to die. We're zero days of supplies left. We're all going to die. Okay, well, I'm going to laugh at them, because they brought this upon themselves. Okay, we got us four fighters and three Varl. That's bad. Are they going to mutiny? Because that morale is not good. Hmm. You're making the usual rounds when you hear a rather loud debate coming from the area that Farl have gathered. Ivor joins you as you approach. Are we gonna have to fight? Cummer says, You've been you'd rather be known for falling asleep and dying in the corner of a meat house than battling asunder? No, I'd rather be known for not dying. Don't even know what you're worried about. I did this a hundred times in the Great Wars. Take some warriors, blow out head first into the dredge, they follow you into the hills, get lost, now they're not following you. When when you did this a hundred times, did they have Balower leading them? Have you never heard about the time I hit Balower in the head with a throwing axe? Both Varl halt their debate when they suddenly notice you watching. So, yeah, don't stop on my account. Careful, my friend. A lot of old history getting thrown around here. The warriors were just noting that um, there's a damn good number of dredge on our asses. Balower pull pulling up the rear. This one thinks he can just wander up there and throw them off our tracks. How about some gratitude? He thought... Oh, that's that's Grumman right now talking. How about some gratitude, he says. Thought you'd be happy to finally be oldest far in the land, you've been... Oh, right. You're not the oldest... He's older than you? Come on! <laughs> so these are the... Okay. I'm never happy to lose more vile, Crummer. Crummer. Besides, I'm not convinced you're really older than me. <laughs> okay, old rivalry you've got here. Comments like that remind me I've already wasted too much time doing nothing. In the old days, I'll already be halfway to the battlefield by now. Speaking of which, you coming, Ingvar? You should. You could ask Bellower for your arm back. Don't think so. Not exactly in the mood right now. All right then. I'll tell Hardborg you said hello. Krumer and a good many Varl warriors head up head out towards the growing army of Dredge. And we lost forty Varl. Okay, amazing. That then they're not gonna eat, but they're not gonna die. Is he go is he coming back? Rook asks. He already he has he always has before. But this time feels different, I fear, says Yuvin. Hmm. Yeah, we didn't lose all the Varl, because the remaining two are with us, so they're not gonna die, hopefully. Because they eat each other. I don't really know what they're eating. Seven clansmen gone, four fighters gone. Yeah, we're just gonna keep losing them. Because we have nothing to feed them. Is it getting smaller? The troop? No encouragement or tales of glory will lift the spirits of the caravan. No, they won't. Just food. In the north, we have times like this, says one of the Varl. The other giants, green. What are the giants? Uh, raising tankards and horns of mead. Skull, they shout and make short work of their drinks, explaining that each person takes a drink when someone tells a story that is more miserable than the last. Others join them for the second round and mead is passed your way. Yeah, this will only make things worse, man. Oh, actually, it won't. Let's join the giants in drinking. Let's see what they have to say. Taking the mead, you shout, Skull! The crowd cheers and laughter echoes through the camp for hours as each person comes up with increasingly more absurd stories of woe. The Varl's remedy is a success, and the caravan is in a much better mood the following day. I'll beat hungover and with less mead than before. And less food. But there we go. At least we're not as bad with the morale. There it is. Seeker home. Man, did we really travel all the way down there? These guys are just crazy. Well, they're all dying. That's... Seeker home. No. That's that city right there. A city built on a spit of land jutting from within a lake. Yeah, we've never had this before. Uh, yeah, let's go. Let's continue. We're gonna need to get a lot of food. A lot of fighters as well. This is not gonna go well. Gather round, doubters, echoes a shout in the distance as Krummer and his band of warriors break through nearby foliage. Oh, where are Varl? We don't have Varl anymore. And behold, the invisible Varl. The caravan is thrilled to see Krummer return safely. Okay, that's that might have been what happened. Did the plan work? Asks Yubin. Work? Responds Krummer. Of course it worked. 
Same old Raj. Should be another day or two at least before they even find their own asses. And we gain, we gain renown. Amazing. Did I have a choice at saying that? Well, they didn't bring supplies. That's... Well. And if you apologize, I'll tell you how I found these. Krummer says, tossing you a pair of leather gloves that look big enough for a varl. He leans in close, whispering to so you can't hear. Had something to do with a raven's nest and a hair tie. Dunder's Hand. Oh, Dunder's Hand. That's... We have heard about Dunder before. Are we going to be able to reach there before the end of the day? Because that would be amazing. Our morale is really good as right now. As home approached us, we fear the worst. The once calm lake surrounding it now looks like a bowl that has been flit. Proud homes sinking into muddy water. A side effect of the quake. What has the rest of the world become on the other side of those mountains? I... I didn't actually pay attention to what he said. What that? What has the world begun? What happened? Man, I gotta need to watch that again, because uh, was watching the the things I was watching of everything. Hmm. I guess we'll find soon enough. Well, one catastrophe to another, says Olive as you pull in to Seeger home. The town appears to be sinking into the lake. Oh, that's what it is. I thought they were... Yeah. Crap. Uh, so that's the catastrophe that he was talking... The narrator was talking about. Townspeople peek from dark windows and makeshift hovels further up the hill. No, says Ivan, looking frantic. Where is she? He runs to, uh, to the front of the caravan, looking out over the water. Juno isn't here. And you get the creeping feeling you're not welcome either. Going up river looks out of the question. The beach is bare, aside from the occasional skeleton of a ruined fish bo fishing boat. You reluctantly set up camp in the sinking town. Are we going to be able to buy supplies? Hmm. All I'm saying is how long are we you willing to wait, says Olive. While taking stock of caravan... Y of caravan... You've in inadvertently walked into a debate between Olive and Ivand. As long as we need to, says Ivand. And I think we need to get out of here, she says. I don't feel good about this place. Why? What's wrong? Something doesn't feel right. The people here are staring at us like those vultures in the wastes. I'm sorry, Ivan, says Alette. I think Odliff is right. I saw a man. The whole time we were setting up, he was just watching me in a creepy way. And long and how long before the dredge find us here? Juno will come, says Ivan. Just give it a little more time, Rook. Listen to me. I need you to trust me on this. Yeah, I didn't trust you before. I'm gonna trust you now, mate. That's for sure. And we can talk to him. We can buy supplies. That's really good. Buy all the supplies. We're gonna need that. Buy that. Let's level up Ivor. But not right now. We're gonna need to do that be before the next battle. Uh, we're not gonna rest. I think we're good as we are. Don't wanna waste supplies. I'm not gonna rest anymore. You're really worried about her, aren't you? Says Rook. What? Oh, Juno? Yeah, worry well, doesn't begin to describe it. If she doesn't find us here or something has happened to her. Are you sure what you saw was real? I, I, it could have been a dream or I don't know. You were pretty exhausted. I, I don't know. To be honest, I'm not sure anymore. Everything is a blur. Uh, don't tell the others I said that. I have to hope I, it wasn't just a dream. So what's it like to be a mender? Being a mender? I guess I never really thought about it like that. It's just part of me. They knew very they knew very young that I would join the order. Born into it, you could say. My mother and father both menders. The guild is for lots of people now. The builders, healers. Do they all pull lightning out of the sky? No, no, that's that's not normal. It's one of the reasons I know Juno. She's one of the council. She helps me control things like this, so we don't end up scaring people. How exactly does weaving work anyway? Well, the hardest part is usually seeing the threads. Everything is part of the, tapis the tapestry. It's made of threads woven together. If you can see the threads, you can manipulate them. I don't know how to explain it, really. It's like trying to play a harp with invisible strings. Look at my staff, for example. Some menders carve intricate patterns in the woods to help them remember the shapes of... Oh, like I said, hard to explain. So why is Bellower still following us? I saw Grafheim as it burned. Ivan gets a far look in his eyes. The sunder blew through it like a tempest. The varl fell in the thousands. Most of the, sunders, most of the sunder left the city and headed south. 
Who knows where they are now? They might be destroying every town they come to, or heading towards Arborang. Bellower stayed in Grofheim, just for the sport of it, I think. As we fled to Einar Toft, I thought he must want to wipe the Varl off the map completely, but then he came after us. Maybe he knew Ivor was the one who killed Rays. Maybe, but I... Let's just make sure he doesn't catch up. Do you think this is the end of times? I don't know what to think. I wish I could give you a better answer. Even if we escaped a dredge that Serpent said as darkness was covering the world, I don't know how long that will take, or what it means even. I'm just trying to solve all one problem at a time. The Menders are in Arborang. If we can find ships and make it to the capital, we might have a chance. Okay, I won't take, it. I won't take any more of your time. No, it's okay, Rook. I appreciate the talk. It's good to stay grounded. I spent all day worrying about serpents in Sunder. I think a lot of people are in intimidated or scared, maybe, of me. Don't worry. It's nothing new. I'm used to it. Maybe sometime we can talk about things that don't include the world ending. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Although by that time, probably the game is going to be ending as well, so it's we're not going to be able to talk. Um, okay, so... Right now, we are here in... What's the name of this town? I don't remember exactly how it goes. And it's Sigerholm. And we're probably going to need to keep going south. To Are we going to Arborang? What the hell is that? Where is that? Arborang. Arborang. Oh, goddammit. It's the starting location of the game. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. The starting location is over here. Close to... It's Vutherfell. It's right there, I think. So, yeah. That's the capital, I think. The capital of the humans. From humble beginnings to eventual seat of power for the king, Arborang is the most populated and contested city throughout the human lands, as each new generation of residents builds another ring of walls which sprawls outward from the cliffs. The city becomes the city continues to grow larger, more indulgent, and more dangerous. Yeah, that's what you get. Segregation, basically. It's not a good idea. It's not a good idea to just build rings around the town. It's not good. That's why Gondor, the city the capital city of uh, of Gondor. No, well actually Minas Tirith. Not Gondor. No, Gondor is the country, but in from the Lord of the Rings. That's why Minas Tirith, with all its seven rings, that would never work. There'd be such a bit of mess and just racism and bad things there. It's, I mean, I get... Mm, yeah, it's bad. But anyway, uh, we got a market. We have the food. We have a level up coming up. I don't want to rest. I just want to... Actually, I would like to rest, but I will not. I will not. We're starving to death, and I will uh, promote him later. Not right now, though. Not right now. Oh, I can just dismiss that? I didn't know that. I don't want that dismissed. I want that to be right there. Okay, so let's leave and... Uh, yeah, that's gonna be bad. Rook. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's right. We need. To, we don't need to leave. We need to wait. Okay. Rook, wait, please. Ivan begs. She said she'd be here. We need her. You tell her she... You can tell he's terrified of leaving as though he'd be giving up on Juno. Yeah, okay. Just a little longer. You'll tell Ivan you you tell Ivan you'll stick it out a little longer, but you're not certain how long you'll be willing to wait yourself. Every day lost becomes more precarious. Okay, let's just rest. A scuffle has broken out in front of the houses. Thief! shouts one of your people as a group of strangers flee from your camp. Oddleaf is already running their direction. They took our supplies! Let's chase the thieves, let's kill them all. Let's see. Tell the caravan to get ready to leave immediately. Let's, yeah, let's chase the thieves. So we lost supplies. Come on, you shout, and several join you in the chase. You wander onto a beach where some men have been waiting for you. Some ten terse words are exchanged about whether anything has been stolen or not. You don't see who draws the first weapon, but it ends the conversation dead. Are we gonna fight? Yeah, we're gonna fight! We're gonna kill these bastards! I'm not gonna level him up because we might need to buy more supplies. I don't know if I can buy more supplies, but I really don't want to... Well, actually, that should be okay. These guys are not gonna be a problem, I don't think. So we are ready. Oh, I am not ready. I wanted to... Items. There's items. Damn it. I forgot. My bad, guys. My bad. Okay, so they have archers. They have uh, normal guys. I'm gonna stand back here. They're not gonna be able to call for supplies, so I'm gonna wait for them as best I can. So let's have you there. Let's have you here. Let's have you here. Let's have you there, and you... There we go. And you there. Okay. It's gonna be the play here. Ready? Okay, so since we have low morale, resting here is gonna be better, because we're gonna recover our... Um, we do no we don't have low morale though we have normal morale yeah it's interesting why maybe it changes or something 
Could move in, but I'm not. I'm gonna wait for them to move. Because how many are we fighting right now? We're fighting eight. We have six, we're fighting eight. It's not too bad. Could move in for the kill there, but I'm not. I'm not gonna do that. Let them come. Let them come. See what happens. Okay, so Ivor is the first one to go, I think. Yes, Ivor is the first one to go. So I'm gonna send him forward. Mm, over there. It's gonna be the bait here. It's not too good, but it is where I'm going for. What I'm going for. Okay. So they got the wall of shield, shield wall, whatever. So actually, that's a good thing for me to take advantage of. But I can't, so this is what I'm gonna do. I uh, can't really do arc lightning either, so let's just end the turn there. Okay, so now you move first. They have shield wall right there as well, which is not good, but I could go for the kill there. Let's do that. Yeah, we're basically killing the locals. I know that, but... Uh, yeah, they are stealing our supplies. We need to survive. We need to protect our own. So he's going for the armor there. That's totally okay. I can move up the field and uh, actually I could do a very serious damage right now. That's interesting. That's good. So I could move here and do very serious damage. Oh, actually, I don't need to do very... I do. It's a shame that Mark Prey doesn't work at range. It would be so awesome. It would be so overpowered as well. Um, let's do this. That guy's not going to be an issue. going for the armor. That is okay, because I can mend that later. Uh, I could go for the kill there as well, and uh, that might not be necessary. If he moves in for him, I'm gonna do the Tempest, so that should be okay. Let's see if I can attack somebody else, though, because she has plenty of break, and I will use it to my advantage here. Why is it red? No! Damn it! Oh, they, because they have... Yeah, okay. That was my bad, guys. Oh, this is not good. It's not good. Not good at all. Okay, I'm gonna go for the kill there. I think I, I'd rather do that. Yeah. Doing bad things. As long as we survive, it should be okay, though. Okay, so she's going for armor break for sure. Uh-huh. Now you can move in. What's your ability? Well, your ability is to kill very ferociously. That's what your ability is. Unfortunately, he's not the whirlwind guy. So let's just go ahead and attack that guy if I can. They have that. Yeah, that's true. So let's kill her instead. Take care of that issue right there. Okay, now he's down. Oh, he took, uh, took uh, AoE damage. Okay, so he's... Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. It's not looking good. But I can, I can work on his armor. Let's do that. Do that right there. Back up to full strength. She needs to not be there. Uh, this is good, actually. He's, uh... He's gonna be able to do... Let's see, let's see. It's not... Yeah, it's not amazing, but... Let's see what happens. One damage for everybody. Yeah, terrible things. Was it more? Hmm. Okay, so... Aladdin is gonna kill those guys, because she... Let's see, so this guy, yeah, he needs to he needs to die. Can't really kill anybody, though. Uh, let's attack him with the uh, armor there. He's got a, an extra exertion right there, perfect. Yeah, the shield wall is going to be a little bit of an issue here. They are going for him. Yeah, as long as they keep doing that, we should be fine. Uh, let's see, break more armor. Break that guy's armor. She's going to do the piercing thing that she has. We'll see how it goes, actually. Might not do that. Because if she doesn't move, she's going to take... She's going to do more damage. Yeah, that's kind of terrible. That's kind of bad. Going to need to do this right now. Yeah, it's not going too well. Okay, so now I can do bad things to these guys. I would like to kill these guys. That'd be a fantastic thing to do. But unfortunately, there's no such luck. So I'm going to move in here. And that one, this guy, do extra damage right there. Okay, he's not going to survive, I know that, but... Yeah, especially if he keeps doing that. Okay, that's one last shield wall, though, I think. So, oh, that's actually very nice. I think this is going to work. I might kill my own friend, but I believe this is going to work. Let's not kill my... Oh, no, 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 a let, a let, a let, a let, a let, a let, a let. Yeah, that was unexpected. 
and bad. We're gonna survive, though. We're definitely gonna survive. But that was really bad. Well, now I know how it works. Now I know how it works. Anyway, I'm gonna break the episode here. Very, very low point. But, uh, don't worry. We're gonna survive this. <laughs> For now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been the Banner Saga. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment. Like the video, but above all, thank you so much for watching. And I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.